Welcome to Dog on the Plot and we are in full festive mode this week and we've got a special celebration. Cheers. Okay, so you're joining me on Wednesday evening and um, we're starting this week in the living room underneath the Christmas tree um, because Christmas has once more come early. <laughs> and that's because this week I received my secret Santa. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it's something that happens on Instagram. It's been happening for a few years. I took part for the first time last year and I've done it again this year and it's organized by Charlie's Patch and the idea is that um, you sign up and um, they are given a name and address that you then send a Christmas card and some seeds to and in turn somebody else is sending you a Christmas card and some seeds and this year mine comes all the way from Orkney which I felt was very exciting <laughs> and um, it's from Gobus Greenhouse um, who are on Instagram um, but also on YouTube been doing a fantastic uh, series of advent things with the Grinch this year if you haven't been catching that you can go on YouTube or Instagram and catch up hilarious um, so from Laura and Kirsten and they sent me such a generous uh, package of seeds and I will just share some of them with you now. Some that I'm not even sure of. Likeness Viscaria, never heard of, exciting. A Scarlet Kale, we all know how much I love kale. One of the ones that I was super excited by was Dwarf Ying Yang Bean. So we know that my Ying Yang Bean harvest was uh, pathetic. Um, and I just did the beans that I did have, but now I have a few more. So, ooh. Next year, we could be very careful with the yin yang beans. We're gonna um, try and multiply the stock. Um, some morning glory seeds. I don't think I have any morning glory, so that's nice. Other one I was super excited about, rainbow glass gem sweet corn. I have never done this and I've wanted to do it. I've kind of thought I need to master normal sweet corn first. I've done baby corn and, and regular corn, but you know what? Actually, I've not even looked at the seeds yet. Let's have a look. Oh, they look bluey, bluey purpley. There we go. Oh, I'm very excited about that. Um, China asters, some more flowers. Now this one, another one I was really excited by. This was just such a good seed crust sensor this year. Now this is the black crim and um, if you watch Jessie at Plot 37, which I'm sure you do, um, you'll know that black crim is one of her top tomatoes. And um, most of my tomato order for this year, what I've ordered and what I was kindly gifted by Ali and Trish from The Right Pair Plot, um, have been the recommendations from Jessie. Um, so I'm super excited to get black crim because that's the one I didn't have. Um, oxide daisy, can't go wrong with an oxide daisy. Long purple aubergine. So my long aubergines are the jewel ones, um, which are stripy. I've not done a long purple, so that's exciting. Homegrown mixed sunflowers. Again, love sunflowers. I love that they're homegrown, um, home saved seed. And zinnias. <sighs> Will I be able to grow zinnias this year? I did get some, didn't I, from the seed that I I grew from seed. I put some in the shady bed, not the best place for them to go. Um, and they did flower, but they certainly weren't impressive. So um, yeah, giving zinnias another go. But wow, what a lot of seeds. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten packets of seeds. Super generous. And not only that, but a little seed ball set. Ooh. <laughs> Don't lose them. And a <laughs> Christmas dinner. <laughs> So this has got cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, parsnips, carrot, cabbage, and sage for stuffing. <laughs> so that'll be fun. That'll be for next year. Um, anyway, I'm very grateful. And that is a lovely um, 
a lovely secret, secret Santa to receive. And so I've received mine, but I haven't actually sent mine yet, um, which I do need to do. Now, part of the reason that I was procrastinating on this was because I have run out of little packets. Um, these are called dinner money envelopes in the UK, I think. And um, you used to be able to get them from Wilco's. Wilco's is no more. Um, and I thought, well, you bound to be able to get them at the post office for a couple of quid. But no, didn't have any. Um, and I'm not paying the prices on Amazon. Um, and I don't like to buy something that has delivery when it's just such a small little thing that should be in your corner shop. Anyway, long story short, I decided to make my own uh, little seed packets ready to send my seed crit Santa. So I thought that's what we would do tonight. We would make some seed packets and choose the seeds that I'm going to send to my my lucky seed crit Santa, who I must actually look up again on Instagram so I make sure. It's somebody who, um, and perhaps I shouldn't name them anyway, but it's somebody who um, has a small growing space. So they have one uh, raised bed, but quite a big long raised bed, I think, and a greenhouse. And they like doing tomatoes, so I was thinking maybe something tomatoey. Um, but also, I want to send some of my own safe seed because that's what I so liked about this one. You know, that somebody has grown it, liked it, and then wants to share it. And I want to do that too. Um, so this poor person is definitely going hollyhock seed. Okay, so what I've been doing this evening is making seed packets. I had to Google it and I tried a couple of varieties and I've settled on this one. And this is what they look like. Okay, and there's another one. That. Okay, and there's the back. So I'm using this paper. It's um, like a handmade paper, homemade paper with uh, flowers, petals in it. Um, and I've had this paper, I feel like for most of my life, to be honest, I must have had this paper since I'm a teenager. And um, there's no use for it because you can't really write on it. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I just sort of carried it around from house to house in craft box after craft box. And um, finally, I seem to have found a use for it. Um, so I'm going to show you how I made these um, and then we'll go upstairs and uh, select some seed. All right, so the first thing you need to do is have some nice paper. Okay, it doesn't have to be um, handmade paper with uh, petals in. By the way, I've got a hand, I didn't make this paper myself, but I can. I've got a kit. Um, I was quite into this idea um, a year ago and I bought all the stuff for it and I only did it once because it was incredibly messy, but it's something I want to do again. Uh, anyway. Um, Right, so you need paper and you need it to be in a square. Now this is rectangle, so I'm just going to put it into a square. So to make it into a square, you just need to go along the diagonal like that and cut off the excess. So I have two squares now and actually that's the first stage is to fold along the diagonal and then you want to fold over your corners so that's the flap at the top and then you've got your first corner there and you just want it to meet the side so you get a straight line across the top like that and then you do it with the other side to cross over like that okay and then I've just been using a little brown tape to fix that at the side and that is basically it now when you fill it you pull apart the two flaps at the top and there you see you've got your pocket um, for the seeds and when the seeds go in there you close it up and then you just feed the top so if you bend it over first there we go um, and then you feed the top into the flap there, and that is your seed packet. Did that make sense? <laughs> I'll do one more with you. Um, if you're like, this is ridiculous, you can fast forward. <laughs> but yeah, so 
in half in down the diagonal um, and then across the top fold over to me on the other side like that Ooh, a little bit of tape to hold it down and then you can just fold over the top get ready with your pocket to put the seeds in. Okay. So I now have quite a lot of these that I've made and are ready to um, fill up. Now, last year um, I did my seed at Santa and I think I sent 19 packets of seeds, which was maybe slightly excessive. Um, although that one I've just received, what was that? That's lots of packets of seeds. Um, but there is a theme for this year's Seed Crypt Santa, which is the cost of living. <laughs> so um, in order not to put people off, because sometimes there were very elaborate Seed Crypt Santas sent out, which is very generous and nice, but also might make some people feel like they can't be involved. So the idea was this year that you keep things fairly modest um, and you send a few packets of seed and um, a Christmas card. Now, um, obviously I got a lot of packets of seed there, but lots of that was saved seed, which I think was it is it within the theme. So I think if you set sending saved seed, you could send more. OK, um, so I'm going to go. I, I think I want to send at least six, like three flower, three vegetable and um, or, you know, edible. And I think uh, they would just look really pretty. And um, yeah, I hope nice. Anyway, if you've got seeds to give someone for Christmas, maybe that was helpful. <laughs> if not, yeah, let's move on and, uh, and go look at my seeds. Right. Um, <laughs> so these are my squash in the office. This is where they are being stored. Um, you wouldn't believe that I've eaten quite a few of these, but yeah, plenty left, including Big Macs. Um, also here uh, is my King Seed order, which we will do an unboxing of soon and uh, my tulips that haven't gone out yet, some saved seed, and uh, there is my seed folders. But <laughs> they're under all these boxes. There's nothing in these boxes. Um, they are there because I thought I might use them for um, the dahlias, which I have not, not dug up yet. So I'm gonna move those boxes <laughs> so I can get to my seeds um, and then we'll have a look. I've made my selection I was talking you all through them while I was looking through my boxes there but I think it was probably pretty boring a lot of indecision so I'm gonna go straight for what I've picked I wanted some flour so I've gone for um, perennial sweet peas um, I think they're always a hit um, some cosmos because that was such a staple of my allotment because I want things you know that are suitable for the person that I'm giving to that giving to but also kind of reflect my growing and of course cosmos was such a big part of my plot this year and hollyhock of course um, so much hollyhock seed so um those were the three flowers that i'm gonna send um and then i wanted some uh things that i felt were good for that person which um seemed to be tomatoes and the real seeds chocolate cherry was one of my favorite tomatoes that i grew this year so I've got some saved seed for that, that I can pass along. Um, I also thought the Real Seeds organic vegetable mallow was quite unusual. So maybe I would send that. And another unusual one was the um, white strawberries, the pine berries, and they grew so well. So um, I think there's quite a few of those left. Um, so I'm gonna pass those along. Um, and then again, another staple of my garden was the tree spinach, um, which, 
self-seeded everywhere. I don't need any more seed, um, but this is a lovely Jekka's organic um, seed. So I want to, to send that one along. Um, and the last thing I thought about um, was salsify. And well, I'll show you this bit. Oh, I know, salsify. I saved salsify seed, that's unusual. Yes, oh gosh. And you know what, I never dug it up. That was meant to be dug up in October, wasn't it? So I saved the seed and forgot about the root, the actual edible part. Oh, okay, right. I'm just gonna ask you to remind me then, but I must remind myself that we need to look if we can find the salsify root. Ooh, we having salsify for Christmas dinner. Mm. Okay, salsify. Yeah, so um, salsify to pass along, but also a reminder for us to, to dig it up um, some point this week. Right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight packets. I think that's, I think that's fair. Um, and I'm going to put them all in my cute little homemade packets. Um, and I need a pen that's going to write on this nicely. Okay, there we go. Okay, and finally, it only seems appropriate to um, give a squash. So I'm gonna go with the tromboncino, um, in part because again, that was um, iconic, <laughs> iconic on my plot this year, um, but also because um, this person uh, hasn't got a lot of space so they could grow them vertically, okay? And I um, haven't got much seed left for the tromboncinos and I definitely wanna grow them next year. So I've just, just got three, three little seeds to go in there, but hopefully they'll be excited about that. I'm gonna write in the card a little bit about each of the seeds that I'm sending and the reason why. Okay, we've got nine packets of seed to send. It's a little bit more than was suggested, but some of it is saved seed and it's in, I mean, it's in homemade packets. So um, I, I think that reflects the cost of living crisis theme somewhat, um, but yeah. Um, I think it's um, got some more unusual things. It's got some saved seed. Uh, it's got a mix of flowers and veg. Um, I think it will be fine. I hope they like it. And uh, so I just need to write the card now. Uh, probably need a small box to send this in and get it in the post because um, we're getting close to the last post date. Okay, well, thank you for joining me with that. Um, I shall catch you later in the week.
Well, I promised a celebration this week, and this is it, because I don't normally come down on a Saturday afternoon and, and drink Prosecco. Um, but yeah, this is the celebration of one whole year on the plot. So the actual day was yesterday, Friday, but I have a big work day on Friday. I didn't get home till 10 o'clock last night. Um, so I've saved it for today. And I'm not just going to sit here on my own and drink a bottle of Prosecco. I've invited the family down, so hopefully they're going to come and join me in a few minutes. But I thought before they come down, we'll have a few moments, just us, and um, have a think back over the year, what's gone well, what hasn't, what challenges I've had, and um, a little bit more generally about, you know, what it's been like to have an allotment, and perhaps some of you are thinking about an allotment in the new year, so this might be helpful. Um, I thought it would be nice for the people who are new to the channel to kind of see the journey without having to go back and watch all my previous videos, although, sure, go do that. Um, and for those of you who've been with me from the beginning to sort of remember where we all started, um, well, we all started with a very blank slate, um, if you remember. So I, I was, I should say I was on um, Danny from the Grapevine Garden. Uh, I was on his live this week. And so I've already started thinking about the last year because people were asking about it and Danny was asking about it. And he was joking um, about, <laughs> I've basically been an allotment tier with a silver spoon in my mouth and I, you know, was given a greenhouse and I had this immaculate plot to start with. And, you know, I am very grateful for everything everybody has gifted me, for the state of the plot when I first got it, that it was in such good condition, could not complain. But at the same time, I feel like I've done a lot and achieved a lot and I'm, you know, on the whole, I think, happy with the progress that I've made over the last year. Sure, there are other things that I wish I'd done. I wish I'd got that greenhouse up. Perhaps we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, I feel like, I guess the first thing to say is no regrets because um, it was a big thing to take on a full-size allotment when I've already tried to grow in quite a large space. My garden is a large space. I was growing in the front yard as well um, and I guess to some extent this is it now this is this is what I do I do the allotment I do my garden I do the vlog um, I don't want to talk too much about the vlog today because um, although this is my one year on the plot and indeed this is the day that I started filming uh, or yesterday uh, last year um, I didn't actually release any videos until January the 4th I had to get up the courage um, to actually press release on on YouTube um, so we'll talk a bit more about being on YouTube for a year in the new year um, today I just sort of wanted to think about the allotment itself um, I mean for those of you who don't know I wasn't on a waiting list for an allotment um, the way I got the allotment was that I was growing on the front garden I was growing my pumpkin patch on the front garden and um, it you know, the neighbours got to know that I liked gardening, they would bring me plants, they would chat to me and talk about the pumpkins. And one guy came by one day and said, look at these pumpkins, are you sure you don't want an allotment? And I'm like, yes, I would love an allotment. And um, he let me know when the gates would be open to the site and I could come in and talk to the steward. And um, that very weekend I did it. And um, I was right there standing by the container there and he said, um, where do you live? Because that's important for, for getting bumped to the top of the list, I would say, um, with allotments that you are local. And of course, I'm only around the corner. And he sort of said, turn around, looked at this plot, which at the time, um, so this was mid-October, um, was full of cosmos. Um, there wasn't an awful lot on here. There was some brassicas, I think, in a cage and uh, leeks. Um, but the grass paths were immaculate. It was all beautiful. And I just couldn't believe my look, really. Um, and then I had three months, no, two months of waiting for uh, the person who had the plot before me to vacate. And um, that was a nerve wracking two months. And it was a two months where I kept thinking, am I taking on too much? Is this a good idea? 
and on the other hand being like oh my god what if i don't get it you know i'm so looking forward to it now i've got all these plans i bought a lot of seeds <laughs> in readiness even before i knew i would get it um and then finally 15th of december i think it was a couple of days down uh, before i came down and collected the key and signed the paperwork and paid um but i still had to wait for him to uh clear the shed and then um so yeah it was the 15th of december was the start date for my plot my first day on the plot and um i came down here and i brought my phone and i just recorded myself sitting right here um i think i was facing the, the camera was facing the other way and um and started the vlog and that was the beginning of the allotment and i think it was the next week and i came down and i put garlic and shallots in the corner at the very back and that was the first thing i planted and then i guess it was a process really over the winter months of getting the plot ready because obviously i'm no dig it really was a blank slate there were no uh, perennials on this plot at all there were a few leeks still in the ground which i ate um uh, but nothing, the, the, as I was saying on Danny's live this week, there wasn't even a rhubarb and everybody says you can't get an allotment without a rhubarb on it, like every plot has a rhubarb, but mine did not, it didn't have any perennials. Um, so that really I think was my, my drive to, to get the beds ready by covering with cardboard, I got a um, truck to bring a load of compost, um, it was just green waste compost, it wasn't, you know, the most nutritious of composts i don't think and it only made a thin layer on the beds but it did keep the weeds down with the cardboard and it yeah gave me a, a blank slate to to plant into i got some fruit trees in i got a rhubarb in and just gra gradually started to build up um the perennials and then eventually the annuals went in too and um by the summer it was pretty beautiful. I was pretty happy with how it looked come sort of July, August. The self-seeded cosmos was absolutely beautiful and I didn't have to do anything for that. It just appeared. It was incredibly productive and abundant and lush and it was a total joy at that point in the year. Which is not to say only that point in the year was a joy. There was so much joy in the whole process of creating the garden and thinking about where I wanted to put things and then getting to the point where it was just like let's just squeeze anything in anywhere and not being too too strategic or too fussy about it I, I basically just chucked things in the ground and hoped for the best and in the end you know I had a polyculture permaculture kind of style going um, the no dig was a success I think you know all sorts of things were mixed in together i might have had a few rows of things but they were right next to a row of something else and there was generally a big spray of cosmos <laughs> growing out of the middle of it um and that was great and that's i think certainly the direction that i want to go in moving forwards as well um i kind of feel like my front garden and the little food forest permaculture space that i've created there in a sense, I want that on every bed on my plot, um, but I have to think that through. And there's so much to think through in terms of next year and how I want the plot to look. Um, because going back to sort of thinking about if you were to get an allotment plot and what you might do and how to think about it, um, I guess my thing was I wanted to see why the plot was designed as it was to begin with. Um, in this case with the grass paths with these little trenches it seemed around the beds and then the kind of these heaped beds and what quickly became clear is because it's my that my plot floods and the trenches catch the water and so your um, crops are li lifted up and uh, are saved from the flooding i can see the logic of it and it's worked to some extent i'm not sure that's the method that I want to continue with and it's something I have to think about I've mentioned before perhaps changing to raised beds um, but that's 
a lot of work and it's a big expense as well. I know you can make raised beds cheaply. Some of you know I've made a raised bed out of pallets and uh, took my life into my hands doing it and it's not something I want to repeat. Um, but my beds in the gar home garden are made from scaffold boards, which is fine and easy to do. Um, but they, they don't come cheap and maybe don't last that long either. Um, so there's lots of sort of things to think about for, for next year. And I don't have to make any decisions really on that just yet. <laughs> At the moment, I'm still trying to clear each of the beds and, and get the weeds out and, uh, and mulch them for over winter. Okay, so what are some of the things that I wanted to cover with you? Um, I've said no regrets, and that's absolutely true. Um, I feel like I've put a lot into this space over the last year, but it's given me, you know, tenfold in return. It really has, and not in just in terms of the produce um, that I've taken from it, but that the exercise, the sense of purpose, the fresh air, the getting out, the bringing the dog down here and it being something that the dog and I could do together which sounds a little bit weird but you know there's not actually that many places you can take dogs and have it be a hobby and things so um that the dog is welcome here to some extent I'm not sure uh, everyone's keen on the fact that she often goes a wandering um but yeah that's really nice that's something Dory and I do together <laughs> and the other pleasure really has been in terms of the community around here and I mean there's a there's a sense of an immediate community in that Mark um, my brother-in-law has the plot next door to me and actually um, so both him and one of my neighbors children uh, children a <laughs> daughter she's in her 30s <laughs> but um, I got well I, I helped enable them both to to get plots and that's been a really nice thing to have done is like I've I've enjoyed and got so much out of this space and then I'm able to help other people do that too um, like that guy did for me my neighbor when he came around and said don't you want to what my plot um, so that's been really good but all you know all the new people that I've met around here Mr Singh and um, Jim with the plot next door and he's been so generous and and Mel who's got the plot opposite mine who um, has known me since I was a kiddie um, <laughs> he's been really generous and super helpful as well and I know people have different experiences on allotments and I don't want to you know give a rose tinted view um, as with all sort of public spaces uh, allotments have their politics and this is no exception but um, my my whole experience here over the last year has been positive absolutely a hundred percent positive everybody has been wonderful and I love that it's such a diverse space you know there are people from so many nationalities there are people who are young older and everybody's just here to do the same thing and they might do it in different ways and they might not agree with your way of doing things but they're so encouraging and super willing to give advice and share share their things share their produce um yeah it's a really wonderful space and somebody asked on the live about in fact it might just have been danny asking you know why have you got this space in in the home garden which you could still cultivate which is the back of my garden where the slabbing and the shed is um why have an allotment and in part it's because an allotment is a third space you know have you heard this you know you've got your your two spaces which tend to be your home and work and you kind of move between home and work um and i you know i I've, I've got my family all near me and you know I, I visit them all the time we spend loads of time together and i'm on the park all the time with the dog but to have a third space is to have somewhere that you can come and there's a sense of there's a social side to things but it's also a, a sense of belonging and I think that's what the allotment gives to me which I don't get just from the garden you know the garden is a beautiful growing space the fact that you can grow vegetables in your garden they would be right there when you're cooking and you can just go out and grab them it, all of that is brilliant but to have an allotment is to have somewhere to come where you feel that you're part of a community and that you belong in that space and there's something special about allotments as well in the sense that you don't own the space you know you're 
you are stewarding the space for a short amount of time. Um, well, some shorter than others. I mean, there's some allotment ears on this site who have been here for, you know, decades, decades. Although they tend to move plots, actually. Um, but you get what I'm saying, right? That it's as much a social space as it is a space to enact your hobby of gardening. So one of the other things I thought we might talk about briefly is um, ideas around self-sufficiency. It was never my intention <laughs> to become completely self-sufficient. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not growing bananas on here. <laughs> but um, the amount of veg that I've had to buy from a supermarket has been minimal, minimal for the entire year. So mushrooms is something that I've had to continue to buy and some fruits. But um, for the most part, my actual vegetables have been plot grown, home grown. And yeah, I've, I've really not needed to supplement very much at all. And that's been great. And I was thinking obviously towards Christmas and thinking about my Christmas dinner. And the only thing I've thought that I might need to buy for my Christmas dinner is Brussels sprouts because I have no success with Brussels sprouts, which I didn't last year either. Um, but everything else I think I can source from the plot or from the garden. Um, and that is a wonderful feeling, you know, that I haven't got to go down to Sainsbury's or wherever on Christmas Eve and fight with everybody for vegetables and, and things, you know. I, I'm going to have a lovely Christmas Eve. In fact, I'm going to come down here Christmas Eve and I'm going to dig up some potatoes. I think my only Swede, <laughs> my poor, probably very woody Swede, uh, will come home with me. I've got the carrots, kale, um, cabbage, um, potatoes, did I say potatoes? Potatoes, still main crop potatoes on here. Um, and then I've got parsnips in the home garden. So um, I guess that'll be in next week's video that I'll be doing that. Yeah, this will release before then. So um, so yeah, we'll be, we'll be digging up Christmas dinner next week. So it's, yeah, speaking of that then, um, self-sufficiency-ish, um, these were my successes. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget. Pumpkins. Pumpkins were an absolute joy this year. The pumpkins and winter squash. I didn't have so much luck with summer squash, so I didn't get any patty pans. Um, my courgettes were really slow to get going, but the, once they did, they were fine. And I had the yellow ones, which was nice. Um, but the pumpkins definitely liked the plot. Um, they liked the space. And I did pamper them a little bit. Of all my crops, the pumpkins were the ones that I was most invested in. Um, but I was very happy with them. And I um, flush, as you saw earlier in this video, flush with pumpkins. People will be getting pumpkins for Christmas. Oh, and, and talking of the pumpkins, the tromboncino. I have to mention the tromboncinos because um, never grown those before. They were fab. And I know people are divided on tromboncinos and whether they like them at all or they prefer to eat them young like courgettes or they prefer to cure them and eat them like pumpkins. Personally, I like them both ways and I will definitely be growing them again. Tomatoes were a failure, um, just got blighted. So thank God I had the ones in the greenhouse at home, although those they had to struggle through. Carrots have been really good. I've been very happy with my little carrot bed because I didn't think much would come of it. And yet it's been very productive. And it's the beans, really. The beans was the other really big thing on the plot. Runner beans did fabulously and they are hungry plants. And um, I did not mollycoddle those at all because all my attention was on the on the squash. Um, I didn't, I watered them a bit, um, but they, they got very little special treatment. And yet the runner beans, brilliant. And the broad beans earlier in the year, actually. Um, French beans, not quite so good, but okay. Um, dwarf beans, not good. So I'll have to remember that, that maybe I have to think about the dwarf beans on the plot. Kale, kale's been really good. That Taunton Dean kale, oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. But all the Cavallo Nero grew really well. Um, kohlrabi was okay, actually, on here. Um, potatoes. Charlotte's brilliant, really like the Charlotte's. We'll definitely be doing those again next year and in the ground. Um, they had very little damage on them from slugs, whereas a lot of the other varieties really did suffer from slugs. Um, I experimented and I, and I, I did um, dug potatoes, so I did them as a trench um, in a, the traditional way. And then I did no dig potatoes, no difference between the two, so you might as well no dig. 
is my my advice although what i would say is if you're slow like me to get your main crop out the ground what happens is the kind of mulches that you put on top um degrade down and of course start to expose the potatoes so either you need to get them out of the ground on time before the the mulch degrades um or decomposes um or you need to keep mulching them which is probably something i should do but i think i i think this week i will dig up all the remaining main crop potatoes that are here onions didn't do particularly well my little golden beetroots were fine they were okay they stayed small but they were fine loofers were a fail um they just got eaten um what was the other fail oh, the, the achocha <laughs> that was a fail i don't even know what happened to it i put it in the ground and the next day it was like nope that's gone um so yeah we'll try again with achocha next year i just had a delivery delivery of seeds aren't i oh i'm so bad um but this is from the um incredible seed library um so the incredible seed library is an initiative of of people who do seed saving and um it's expertly organized by the lovely maggie carr and she has a website now where you can go and look at the varieties that they have an offer most of them are heritage varieties and you get to choose up to 10 packets of seeds for free and she'll post them to you it's um five pound postage and then you grow the produce and it's about keeping alive these heritage varieties and encouraging people to grow and to save seed so the idea is that you don't have to but if you can um, and you're interested you can start to save some of the seed and then send it back when you harvest and it's it's ready and then it goes back into the seed library for the following year so this year i would have liked to have sent some pumpkin seeds and things like that but i grew too many varieties in two close quarters so i couldn't really save that seed um but what i did have was enormous amounts of hollyhock seed and i felt like if i couldn't give anything else back at least i could send those so yes if you go on and sign up for the incredible seed library um the the hollyhock seed down there came from me <laughs> so i have other failures on here and successes but they're more related to the home garden like the ochre last week was great uh the sweet potatoes were good the tomatoes in the greenhouse although not brilliant they did produce tomatoes at the end and i know some of you thought i wouldn't get any um so that was all fine and ranunculus i found i could grow ranunculus so i'm pretty chuffed with that what was a failure though at home oh you know what the biggest failure in fact i think the biggest uh not failure of the year because actually it grew and it was a perfectly good crop but the biggest disappointment of this year is <laughs> the asparagus pea did anybody else grow asparagus peas this year or have in the past? What the hell is that vegetable? It looks beautiful. I will give it that. And I, I think I might still have some seed, in which case I'm gonna grow them as ornamentals, perhaps in hanging baskets um, next year. But um, to taste, I mean, I couldn't even tell you what they taste like because the sensation of them in your mouth was so awful. Um, I was trying to think of the film. There's a film where somebody's face gets sucked in like that. And um, it took me ages to remember, but it's the film Airplane. <laughs> so this is a really niche cultural reference now. But if you get this, let me know in the comments. There is a scene in Airplane where there's a young girl on an IV and they're singing a song and the guitar, guitar uh, neck keeps pulling out the IV. And every time it does, she goes like this. <laughs> and that, I mean, it's a probably a terribly offensive film now but that the is exactly what you do when you eat an asparagus pea it sucks all the moisture out of your mouth it's just awful awful um so yeah if you were thinking oh i might try asparagus peas next year no don't do it don't do it oh and of course what was the other thing that was a big disappointment the tansy was that a disappointment a failure or a mistake i think the tansy was a mistake um because it, it smells like cat pee and is very invasive. <laughs> and and I was getting pulled up on this on Danny's Live on Thursday about all these invasive plants I just bung in the ground and hope for the best. Um, but there's another success, the Jerusalem artichokes. Brilliant, so productive. 
Um, and I think sometimes you do have to think about if you are thinking about self-sufficiency, um, how much yield you are getting from a particular crop because ochre tastes delicious, plant looks lovely, it's beautiful, um, but it also, you know, didn't give that much. I had, what, two meals? Whereas these Jerusalem artichokes, well, they're gonna feed me for life now, actually, aren't they? Yeah, I could, I could eat those all year long and they will keep coming back and yeah, I'm never gonna starve. That's, <laughs> I am never gonna starve because I have Jerusalem artichokes both here and in my garden. And the harvest weren't the only highlights from this plot. Obviously winning, um, what, second place? I can't always say winning, but I was second place um, for uh, best newcomer on the plot. So that was really brilliant and gave me a lot of motivation. Um, and the other thing was the horticultural show. And I know lots of my wins at the horticultural show were simply because not very many people entered. But even so, I had produce to enter and that, that felt really good and it was so much fun I am definitely doing it again next year um, but I'm gonna have way more competition from Mark next year he is going all in he has bought all the exhibition seed right I'm very conscious of um, chattering on too long um, but is there anything else that I feel I want to impart after my first full year on an allotment plot here are my things, I, okay, here are my things to take into consideration. Um, one is a lot of work. A lot of time is required of an allotment plot. Um, secondly, uh, well, related, it will take over your life, like just in various ways. You will be watching other allotment tiers on YouTube all the time. If you're like me, you will be anyway. You'll be reading books. Um, you'll be browsing seed catalogs and online shops. Um, yeah, you will become obsessed. I think even though it's your own plot, it's always in some sense a collaborative effort in the sense that this is, uh, so you have your little growing space, but it is part of a much larger growing space. And I don't think you can silo yourself off, you know? Um, it's a community growing. Although it's not a community garden and you're all working on the same produce, it's still a community growing together in a space. Um, and part of the wonder of it is being able to bring other people in, um, whether it's to get their own plots like I did with Mark and uh, my neighbor's daughter, or whether it's people coming in to help you. Like, um, I had, you know, I gave my mom a shout out on the live this week, but I'm giving her a shout out now. My mom has been indispensable <laughs> in terms of this plot. Um, she has helped so much. I mean, she's gained from it. She's had plenty of veg. <laughs> of the plot but um she's also you know put a lot of work in i would say if you know your idea of gardening is just you on your own in your space then perhaps an allotment isn't for you because people will talk to you <laughs> they will talk to you and not for just a short amount of time like my, i am not, i'm not time rich sometimes you get down here and you think right i've got an hour and i'm going to do this this and this and and then one of the the mature gents comes over to have a chat and you're like well that's that hour gone <laughs> but that is part of it that i embrace that you know that it's part of what i love about this space what did i get to number three uh, do i have two more <laughs> why do i need five i don't know i think i'll leave it there i think i've talked for far too long <laughs> And I need to get my family down here and drink some of this Prosecco before I drink it all myself. And the sun is going down somewhat. But for now, um, you know what? This has been an amazing year. An amazing year. And it, yeah, the plot has given me so much. Um, it's hard even to express um, how much joy I've got from it. What it's meant to me in terms of how I even see myself. Like I, I feel like I see myself differently because of this allotment plot. Um, I think other people see me differently. <laughs> in fact, uh, just this morning, um, I was at my sister's this morning uh, to see my dad and um, I was just getting up to go and she says, there's something on the back of your jeans. She said, come here. And so she's on the back of me like this. And she's like, it's a slug. <laughs> You've got a slug on your back of your jeans. I wore these jeans to work yesterday. I haven't even been to the plot or into the garden since then and yeah somehow this slug is just <laughs> living with me on me <laughs> so I've sort of almost become 
almost become at one with nature, really, you know. <laughs> and that's a daft example, but what I am trying to say in a more serious way is that, yeah, the allotment has allowed me to embed myself in the natural world in ways that I don't think the garden quite did. In some ways, the garden is still part of a domestic space in the way that the allotment isn't. The allotment feels much more like it's part of the natural world as opposed to gardens, which, you know, um, people talk about gardens and rooms, you know, like the garden is an extension of, of the home. Um, the allotment is different to that. That's what I would say. I would be interested to know if those of you have that, who have allotments feel the same way. And the last thing I want to say, honestly, this is the last thing I'm going to say on this, is it has made a huge difference doing this with you. Huge difference. It's wonderful to have um, the whole of my journey this year documented in detail in these videos. It got in more and more detail as we've gone along. So that is wonderful. But even more so, it's that I've had a huge amount of encouragement from you lot as I've been getting on with it and lots of advice um, but more than that it's not really the advice although that is always welcome it's just that other people seem to be invested in what I'm doing here and that helps me to motivate me and feel like well all of this is bigger than yourself I think that's part of it as well yeah you know, an allotment plot is bigger than yourself because it's all the other people who've got plots around you too but it's also bigger than yourself because you're engaging with nature in ways that you wouldn't otherwise and it's bigger than you when you're putting it onto youtube because you're connecting with people all over the world who are invested in what you're doing um oh you can tell the prosecco is is going to my head now i'm going to stop i'm going to text the family to come down here and yeah just a massive thank you to all of you you are part of all of this but we will talk more youtubey things in a couple of weeks um yeah for now why do i always do that usually i edit out that thing i don't know why i do it i don't know why Plots. <laughs> 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 <laughs>